Here we go again. While well, union members, MPs, prisoners, members of the RCMP, military use private facilities, while provincial governments fly patients south of the border for treatment in private clinics, the self-proclaimed defenders of the health care system push to prevent the rest of us the option of spending our own money, our after-tax dollars, on private health care. This is what we already do for the majority of us who don't have extended care. We spend it on dentists, massage therapists, physiotherapists, chiropractors, speech therapists. I mean, the list goes on, and it didn't bring down the public system. Let me say unequivocally, these self-proclaimed defenders of the public system don't speak for me, and they certainly don't speak for anyone who's been in discomfort, pain, had the quality of their life disrupted while waiting for treatment, and who were willing to forego a vacation, a new car, a renovation, put it on their credit card, whatever choice they make in order to pay for medical treatment. The key point is that their defense is of a system, but healthcare should be about individuals, not some blind allegiance to a system. The opposition to private care is an old ideological battle, but that the Supreme Court has already stated it's without merit. After a year of hearing evidence in the Shuili case, Supreme Court Justices McLaughlin, Major, Bastrash concluded, and please listen, in quotes, many Western democracies that do not impose a monopoly on the delivery of health care have successfully delivered to their citizens medical services that are superior to and more affordable than the services that are presently available in Canada. The evidence refutes the government's theoretical contention that a prohibition on private insurance is linked to maintaining public health care. End of quote. My name is Mike Campbell. Join me Saturday for Money